Lessons that follow, you will develop the core skills you need to become a website designer by learning the syntax and proper usage of XHTML and CSS to create web pages. You'll start with the fundamentals of this scripting language and learn techniques that will allow you to create engaging web pages efficiently and learn to separate content from layout. In this first chapter, we'll gain an understanding of what exactly XHTML and CSS are, how they work, and how you'll use them to build your first web page. And let's begin. Before we start writing XHTML and cascading style sheets, we should get an understanding of what those technologies are. HTML is a term that you've probably heard before and probably drove you to seek out this class and learn how to create web pages. HTML is an acronym which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's essentially a set of markup tags and structure used to create web pages. It's derivative of an older technology called SGML, which is a very rigid, very complex technology. HTML has gone through many updates over the years, and the core of what makes HTML is applicable to what we'll be learning in this class. There is a related technology that's worth mentioning called XML which stands for Extensible Markup Language. This technology is beyond the scope of what we'll cover in this class, but we should mention that it exists. It is a general purpose markup structure used to describe types of data, essentially used to define your own tags to define sets of data that you wish to organize. We won't be getting into that in this class. I only wish to mention XML to explain the name XHTML, which stands for Extensible Hypertext Markup Language. This is essentially an updated version of HTML which conforms to the rules of XHTML. That's where the X in XHTML comes from. Of course, just to make things a little bit difficult, when you're getting started with a new technology that might be a little bit scary, it's not like anything you've ever seen before, especially if you're coming from the graphic design world, XHTML has three different flavors, essentially. Strict, transitional, and frame set. What's the difference between each of these versions? XHTML 1.0 transitional is the most flexible of the three versions of XHTML available to us. And it's the version of XHTML that we will be using in this class. XHTML 1.0 transitional will allow the syntax of HTML to be validated by our web browser. We'll come back to validation in a later lesson, but our web browser needs us to tell it what version of XHTML or HTML we are going to use to help that browser interpret our markup. XHTML 1.0 strict does not allow the syntax of HTML to validate as valid code in our web browser. XHTML 1.0 frame set allows us to tell the web browser that we wish to break our web browser window into multiple windows into which we can populate different sets of data. We'll get into this towards the end of our lessons. The terms HTML and XHTML are often used interchangeably. You might be asking yourself, well, what's the difference between HTML and XHTML to us if we're going to be using the two terms interchangeably? Essentially, syntax is what we're primarily concerned with. Making sure that our tags, our script, is properly structured. The better we do with structuring our HTML tags, the better our web page will look, the better our web page will work. As time goes by, technology changes, capabilities expand, and scripting has to evolve to leverage new technologies. That's why. HTML and its successor, XHTML, and website design in general is a moving target. Our tools will always improve. The capabilities available to us as designers will expand. We as web designers need to develop our skills and a tradition of continuous learning. You might be asking yourself, who determines how HTML and XHTML works? In the 1990s, this was an open argument, and if you had done any website design or visited any web pages during the 1990s, you probably saw many things that didn't work, were inconsistent, worked in one browser but didn't work in another. The nightmare of the late 1990s gave rise to the need for standards so that competing technologies could compete with each other 
but still play by the same rulebook. The World Wide Web Consortium is the organization which puts forth recommendations on new standards. You can visit the consortium's website at www.w3.org and learn more about current and pending consortium recommendations.